you guys greetings and salutations this is James here at unique perspectives and I'm actually located here at Irvine Great Park in the city of Irvine in Orange County California so you know enjoying myself here it doesn't look like it's a lot of people I think this is around the time the children getting back to school and things like that here in Los Angeles uh, in Orange County area so yeah it's kind of abandoned in the day now everyone's like at school and work and things like that so I actually have some classes I'm gonna be teaching uh, later on so I thought I'd shoot a video before my classes started uh, one thing I do want to encourage you guys to do is like and subscribe I absolutely love the support and I'm loving all the amazing people that I'm meeting ever since I started this YouTube journey about eight months ago so keep the comments coming in whether you agree or disagree I'm all for everything okay yeah James here and let's just get into the topic at hand so as a Christian I really wanted to just talk about the gospel and, and the offensive nature of the gospel I think there's a lot of us that already know this but there are a lot of us that you know take on the role of being a Christian you know we say hey I'm a Christian it, when it comes to our activities it's very easy to spend time with Christians to to go to Christian parties, to go to church, to read our Bibles, to do all these things. But there's a lot of us that neglect one of the most important aspects of the Christian faith, and that is sharing the gospel. There's a lot of people that feel very uncomfortable sharing the gospel with this dying world. And this is something that we all should be doing. This should be a priority for every Christian man and woman who understands the gospel. We should be preaching it and sharing it with this dying world. The gospel essentially is, and this is the, the best, uh, most simplest way to put it, that the gospel has two aspects to it. It's that we broke God's law and Jesus paid our our fine. So it's really that simple. We broke God's law and Jesus paid our fine. It's really important that we go out in this world and we talk to people and share the gospel with our friends, with our family members, with the people that we have access to. And really just keep in mind that it there is an offensive nature behind the gospel. You know, there's a lot of us that, I, you know, I, I'll just give you an example. I was talking to a uh, buddy of mine that has an atheistic background, worldview. And I was talking to him on the phone maybe almost a week ago. And we were having a discussion. We were talking about all these different things. We were trying to talk about arrangements. We were making together for a future hangout when we you know gonna work on something and I don't out of out of the blue he decided that he wanted to criticize my faith you know biblical Christianity which he has done from time to time and you know he was saying how you know he doesn't understand why there are people that leave that there's a God uh, there's no evidence you know they can believe what they want and he said all these things really just attacking uh, the nature of God you know just God's character you know and what I explained to him very calmly is that I said everything that you're saying most people who are living lives that really oppose or really are, are doing things that they shouldn't be doing. They think the exact same way. Everyone that opposes God, they know that there's a God. They know that there's a God. They understand that this world didn't create itself, you know? And I explained to him that it's very interesting how we all know when we look at a painting that the painting is proof that there's a painter or the building is itself proof that there's a builder. So we know that when we look at creation, we know that there is a creator. So this is the evidence itself, just the fact that it's here. And the reason why people like yourself, and I explained to him, people like yourself aren't interested in finding God is because you you're living lifestyles that you know is not really welcoming to a, a, a godly lifestyle and I even brought up the fact that I knew a group of people and I was including him as well that you know are living with their girlfriends I said everyone who has a conscience and God gave us all a conscience we all not know right from wrong because of the conscience that God has given us I said everyone that opposes God has a conscience and they know that there's a God and they know when they're doing evil or when they're doing good God has given us and instilled this tool inside of us to differentiate between right and wrong. And I told him that con uh, means with, and science means knowledge. And when we do something, we do it with knowledge. When we give something to, you know, the homeless, we do it with knowledge. We know that we're doing something good. Or if we take something that doesn't belong to them, we know it with knowledge. We know that we're doing something evil. And so I explained to him that there's no way around that, that regardless of if he believes in God or not, he's going to die and he's going to meet God face to face one day. Uh, Hebrews 9.27, I explained, says it's appointed for everyone to die once and after this the judgment. So that means that everyone, whether you, you know, supposedly believe in God or not, you're going to be, meet God face to face, whether you like it or not. 150,000 people die statistically every 24 hours worldwide. That's something that all of us really need to keep in mind, that our heartbeat one day is going to stop. It's going to stop one day. And death itself is going to escort us into the presence of God. And so we really need to keep in mind that as Christians, we need to share this message with people. We need to help them understand with God's law first. Remember, we want to always present God's law first before we get to the good side or the happy side of the gospel, which Jesus paid our fine and died on the cross. 
There's a lot of us that, that neglect that aspect of the gospel. We go straight to, hey, Jesus died for you, Jesus loves you, all this other stuff. When you're talking to somebody that is living a life of sin and you're just saying, hey, Jesus loves you, they were like, well, okay, I love me too. You know, so it's really important to humble them and help them understand they're not right with God. That foundation that they think that they're standing on that's strong, we have to help them understand that they're not standing on a strong foundation, that they're at risk, that if they die, they're going to lose their eternity, they're going to lose their life. You know, so it's really important that we emphasize that and we use God's moral law to open up God's law and communicate with their conscience that they are not right with God. It's the same thing with my atheist, but I explained to him the, the seventh commandment says no fornicator will inherit the kingdom of God, 1 Corinthians 6, 9. So he already understood, oh, I'm in that group. He's like, oh, I'm, I'm in danger. And he admitted that he was uncomfortable with our conversation. And I was thinking to myself, you should be because you're, as of, as of right now, you're on your way to hell. You and your partner are on your way to hell. And so it's really important to share this, especially when we love people, when we say we love people. It's really important to share this with people. However, it's, it's important to also keep in mind that we love these people enough to tell them the truth. There's a lot of people that know the gospel, but they won't open their mouth and they won't say it to anybody. And they will supposedly love somebody, but they won't even share that, you know, there is a way to, to, to not go to hell. Even though when they see people doing wrong and doing evil, they will still intentionally avoid having spiritual conversations. And for me, I'm the opposite. You know, I do have that reformed, you know, in me, you know, that Calvinist. So I do want to talk to people about the reality of hell. You know, it's really important to know that Jesus talked more about a hell than he talked about heaven in the four gospels. Think about that. Think about that. He talked more about hell and the reality of hell than he talked about heaven. And so a lot of us, we beat around the bush and we don't want to talk about those things, but we're doing people a disservice and we're not, you know, committing to Matthew 28, the Great Commission, where we are to preach this message to this dying world. You know, we're supposed to be even have the authority to baptize, you know, people in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And so we should be taking part in that. But it's, we do people a disservice that we show that we don't really love them when we don't tell them the truth and when we're watching them sin and we don't warn them of the reality of hell. Remember, 150,000 people die every 24 hours. And one of the things that we just have to keep in mind is God's law is that, that instrument that we should be using to remind people or help people understand that they're not right with God. Uh, Psalms 19 verse 7 says, uh, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. I'll say it one more time. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. It's really important that we open up God's law to help communicate with somebody that they're not right with God, that they have to start thinking about what is it that they're going to do and what they need to do is repent, that's turn away from their sin and put their complete faith in the Savior Jesus Christ and his finished work on the cross on Golgotha. And you know, when he said it is finished, you know, that's what he did. The fine was paid on our behalf for those that would be saved. So it's really important just to keep this in mind. The Apostle Paul said, I had not known sin, but by the law. That's Romans 7 verse 7. Paul did not even know he was violating God's law until some, he understood what the law was and it was presented to him. And that's what we should be doing is presenting the law to people. But I understand the gospel itself is offensive. It's offensive. It's not the best way to start getting buddies and friends around you and celebrate you. It's something that people want to run away from because we all have a conscience and we all know if we're watching pornography, if we're sleeping around, if we're, you know, drinking hard, being a drunkard, you know, abusing alcohol, using drugs, or doing all this stuff. No, we want to stay away from the biblical God and we, you know, if anything, a person will deny the existence of God or they'll just create a fake God in their own image, you know, and I know plenty of people that have committed themselves to false religions so they can do whatever they want and go cohabitate and go use whatever language they want watch whatever filthy films they want because they've already created a god in their own image that high fives them when they're sinning and so it's really important just to understand that it's not always going to, we're not always going to get a happy response from people it's a very offensive mess but this is why so many people avoid sharing the gospel in the first place one last thing i want to remind you guys of is in acts chapter 9 the apostle paul who wrote 13 books of the new testament was condemning christians and after he was confronted and changed by christ you know he was blinded on the road to Damascus. He was blinded and ultimately converted. It was the Holy Spirit that instilled a new nature in him. And in the same chapter, we see him converted. We see him already going to the synagogues where the Jews were, and he shared the gospel with them, letting them know that what they understood was, was false, that, that they needed the uh, Christ. They needed the Messiah. And one of the things that we read in Acts chapter 9 is there were two different responses that Paul received from these uh, Jews. One of the responses that Paul received was some were actually converted because of his message. So God actually used Paul to convert these men to Christ. And so they became Christians. They actually were changed and they were born again through the new birth. John 3, 3. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless someone is born again, they cannot even see the kingdom of God. That's what Jesus said to Nicodemus in John chapter 3. But what's interesting is that there, were, there was another response from the Jews. 
that they were so angry, some of them actually committed to try to kill Paul. And so that's what we Christians have to keep in mind is that the message that we have is an offensive message. And you have, you're going to have some people that are going to respond very positively because God's going to change them and they're going to respond and they're going to start following the Lord because God is going to use you to minister to them. But you're also going to potentially lose relationships and lose friends. And that's slightly a part of the sacrifice of actually sharing the gospel in love with people that you care about. You're going to have people defriend you from social media or block you or stay away from you or go out and hang out with other people and they're not going to invite you. So it's really something I just wanted to remind you guys of, but the gospel itself is offensive. It is. Remember, Psalms 19 verse 7, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Before you get to the part of Jesus died on, on the cross for your sins, we have to understand to open up God's law to this dying world and let a person know they are not right with God. God bless you guys. Thank you for listening. Take care, peace, and all right, I'll see you next time. Please like and subscribe. Bye.